The mission today is to sharpen your swords and get you ready for battle. It's time to fine tune your craft and make you the best in what you do. The mission is to equip you to help anyone purchase what they need. We'll share the best advice from the best in their industry. You'll be listening to a conversation you wish you had with the mentors you wish you had. Take what makes sense to you and makes you better in your career. You guys, Bruce Lee said it best. Absorb what is useful and discard what is not. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Commission Mission. My name is Eric Gerace. I'm Micah Henderson, and we have an amazing episode ready for you. We have Angela Merritt um, has been with Dex Imaging, uh, Senior Account Representative, uh, 19 years, not only surviving, but thriving in copier sales for 19 years. And if anybody knows how competitive that is, that's really saying something. And the old adage, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. And, and <laughs> dang it, like, y- you should run for Congress then, because you can, <laughs> if, if, you, if you're knocking it out of the park uh, for 19 years. Um, Angela, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Oh, man. Life is good. Life is good. Uh, We're living in paradise, man, so it's always, you're always a great day. You're on the Gulf Coast, a beautiful area of, state, of our lovely state of Florida. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I was just a mindset living in paradise. Um, <laughs> but um, so you're in Jacksonville. Yes, sir. And um, what we really aim to do here is help people starting off in sales, starting off in business, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, whether they're just starting off um, or, or, you know, just not uh, getting the ball rolling as fast as they could. uh, We try to make it click for them. And um, when when you were first getting into copier sales, and you were uh, just starting off. Um, I know a lot of industries, companies will try to encourage you to bug the crap out of your family and friends and guilt them into uh, buying something from you. Well, mm-hmm. when it comes to copier sales, I, I mean, I don't know if there's a lot of you know moms, dads, aunts, uncles that that need a jumbo industrial size you know <laughs> copier. You know, um, probably put something on and make a table out of it. You know, but. Um, you know, so I have no family members with copiers in their house. It, and, and, and so to, to that point, how do you get the ball starting for you um, when it comes to um, reaching out to businesses that, that may need your services? Well, I'll say back in the days that when I started, you know, um, 23 years ago, actually, when I started in the industry, I mean, it was a lot of, uh, I don't like to call it cold calling, I called it hot knocking, you know, up and down the street, <laughs> knocking on doors, trying to build relationships, um, not being afraid to pick up the phone and just making the phone call. Um, because, you know, it, with any type of sales, if you don't have someone at least receptive to what you are trying to offer, you can't sell much. So um, there was a lot of that. I tell you, I wore through a lot of shoes. I, um, you know, come home horse at the end of the day for the number of the phone calls and stuff that I would make. And, you know, there's no magic science. It's all in the activity. Getting to work and and exactly. don't be afraid of, of some rejection. Don't be afraid of somebody uh, telling you either no or, you know, and maybe knows the nice way of putting it. I will tell you, you know, and it's, it's, it's kind of a funny story because a lot of people joke about it here. I think the, uh, and I'm almost embarrassed that I'm fixing to admit, admit this for everybody to hear, but I think the first 90 days in my sales process that I cried daily at the end of the day on a regular basis, it's like, what the heck am I doing? You know, am I crazy? But I think that at the end of the day, it was the tenacity mm-hmm. and the desire that I did not want, I was not going to fail. And so every day, you know, I come back and, you know, because when I started with Dex, it was a brand new company. We had no base. Everything was organically um, driven from the results of what the sales reps were doing. So um, I think that just with that alone, you know, the first 90 days, I was a new guy or a new girl uh, on the block. Nobody had ever heard of my company. It was very challenging. And so, you know, finally, I think it took me about 90 days before I first got my first sale. And then from there, I mean, here we are 19 years later. So looking back then, you know, if you knew then what you know now, would you have cried or would you have just, uh, you know, gotten ready for the next day, ready to kick ass? I, I probably would have went back and said, hey, you know, it, it, it's funny how you see things in you, your journey and you can go back and reflect. Yeah. So I, I laugh at that. I think, you know, I was 23 years old when I started into the, the industry. So young, very, uh, you know, green and had a lot to learn about life. So I, I definitely would just say that, you know, every time I felt defeated, I would go back and just say, just do one more. You know, uh, when you have those moments, get them out, you know, go back and um, 
you know, uh, the next day and go at it a little harder. You know, that's what's going to build success. I think a, a, a new w- w- word that uh, I, I haven't uh, we haven't used on the show yet is is tenacity. And you know, that's a great word. And there's a distinction between that and confidence. Of course, you need the confidence to even get started. But you need that tenacity to go back. I was more tenacious in my beginning of my sales career than I was confident. Um, I think I've grown into that over uh over the years. Yeah. So, I mean, can you also say like, uh, you know, tenacity, but also uh, kind of hard headed, like just refusing to give up? Oh, I'm very stubborn. <laughs> yeah, so, stubborn. yeah, I, I, I did not. I mean, the one thing I have always felt like in my life that I was I could always do anything that I really put my mind to. Right. And so and I had a mentor tell me one time, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. So I think that with that and just the fact of I was determined that come hell or high water, I was going to be successful. I love that comment about if you're not uh, uncomfortable, you're not growing because what happens with a lot of people sometimes is they don't realize that everything that you have right now is inside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Everything that you want is outside of that. So you've Absolutely. got to get used to being uncomfortable um, to get the things that you want that you don't have right now. So that's, that's, that's right. a fantastic reminder of that point and especially a, a key thing to keep in mind when, when you are getting those doors slammed on you and those no's, 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 no's in the beginning, it's, it's defeating, you know, and with copier sales, I, I, I only lasted in that industry for about two years, um, but it was a really important two years because it taught me so many levels of marketing. Um, I'm sure door knocking is not your only strategy that you use. I, I mean, we use fax broadcasts, postcards, um, mailers, you name it. I mean, you have to be, but it's so important about building relationships. So it is. when you sell that copier, that's not the last time you talk to them, is it? No, it's not. I mean, I, I'd say that I've been fortunate since I've been here for so long. A lot of my clients have honestly become friends. So, but you know, you build, you have to follow up. I mean, today it's a sale. Tomorrow it's really the customer service that makes the difference and sets you aside for your, your competition, in my opinion. Um, you know, you have to follow up. You have to make sure that you're delivering what you're promised. Um, you know, um, it can be in especially such a highly competitive market or any anything it's like you know customers want to know that they're there they want to know that you value them as a client and that's what truly you know makes the difference for repeat business and referrals going down the line it's so much easier to keep an already established client than to go out and get a new one it, it absolutely is yeah to, just the amount of uh, time and energy and money absolutely If you're in a business to business world too, I think, you know, I mean, I don't, I might be off on my statistic, but they say the average person stays what at a job two to three years before they move on to something else. And so in my world, you know, I've been in this industry long enough that I've had people that started out working for one company and bought a solution from me that is, has ended up, you know, they move on in their careers and they go somewhere else. And so then they go, Hey, I know the person for you to call. So it's, it becomes like this spider web of networking, um, that just based off taking care of your current clients. Yeah. And if, if you have that perspective, uh, it's really hard to burn any bridges in that spider web. It, it just keeps on getting bigger and stronger when, when you've, uh, when you always tried your best to make the right decision and, you know, you're working hard and taking care of people, helping people for you not to have that good, uh, reputation in your community. And that when people do go their separate ways, uh, to, to you to always be that professional in that industry that, that, that you're in. Absolutely. You never burn a bridge because you don't ever know when you're going to have to cross again. Hey, everybody. This episode of the Commission Mission is brought to you by Bill Kramer Chevrolet. When this baby gets up and running, you're going to see some serious stuff. Do we have enough gas? Where we're going, we don't need gas. Will, what the hell are all these chargers? The question is not, what the hell are these chargers, Chris? But when the hell are these chargers? Will, are you telling me we're adding state-of-the-art charging stations and upgrading our entire electrical grid for electric vehicles? Yes, but the future is now. <laughs> um, so you have, I, I'm guessing you don't do as much hot knocking as y- you used to. Is that fair to say? Well, 
it is fair to say, but I'll tell you, I think that's a, a misconception that a lot of people have. I, I make it a point that I still dedicate a certain amount of time for my day of trying to reach out to new prospects because things change all the time. Um, I mean, who would have predicted, and I hate to even bring it up, that two years ago that we would be going into a pandemic. Uh, you just uh, don't uh, know. Uh, uh, a pandemic? <laughs> or whatever you call that thing. Um, uh, we're in Florida. I thought that was like for like two months. It didn't well, happen here. You, you, uh, yeah. Did you, that you even really even about. happen here? I don't know. So, it, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Things happen. Yeah, right. We see a lot of things change with businesses. Um, don't get so complacent. Yeah. You do. You do. So I think it's very important, especially as you get in a tenure of your career, that you still re are reminded about the things that did make you successful. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, anytime I've ever had a bad month, Again, I had another good mentor that always just said, hey, get back to the basics. What did you do in the beginning of your career that made you successful? And he also told me not to be a fool, but didn't make sure that I made time for that um, in the long run as my career has grown. Because like I said, I don't do it nearly as much, no, that as I used to, but I still think you have to find it at uh, make the time during the day, even with as busy as what you are, to try to reach out and just say, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. Can we meet to talk about my services? For sure. And and well, yeah. my real estate mentor, Nolly Williams, he has a program called the three hour work day in real estate. And two of those hours every day are dedicated to lead generation, whether it's new clients or recruiting um, new agents. So that Absolutely. just shows you how important for someone to have a three hour work day that two thirds of that day is focused on lead generation. So yeah, Absolutely. Or, and, and, and the fundamentals in, in, in general um, to, to not lose touch with that and not to say that you're not absolutely busy, um, but to even though the the percentage of your day has changed in that activity it's still there and uh are you in your position with the company are, are you helping anybody new um uh, you know uh, officially are, are you training anybody or have you just taken on the mentor role with anybody over the years i, I certainly have you know um we see new reps and stuff come through all the time. And as you know, we were talking earlier, I mean, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people start at their basis of their sales career in copier industries. A lot of uh, employers I have seen encourage people to come out and go into copier sales because it teaches you a bunch, it teaches you a bunch about the fundamentals of the things you're going to have to do to be successful in sales. So um, we've had many reps and stuff come and go. I have to say that I'm the only female on my sales team in Jacksonville. So um, I have a lot of times where it's almost like I take the mom, mother hen approach of the office. So everybody you know, comes to me asking you know, me general questions and stuff like that. And my boss says that you know he loves for me to be here because I add a certain amount of uh, entertainment, I guess, to the office. <laughs> but, so, you know, I guess to answer your question, I mean, yes, absolutely. I mean, Dex has always worked under a um, team type selling structure so there's been times that i've had canvassers that have come through sometimes they move on to other things sometimes they move into other roles and stuff within the company so yes i mean i think you've got to always um when you're blessed in an industry you have a responsibility to help a uh, mentor and uh help share the successes of what's worked for you for sure. I mean, that's part of uh, the creation of this show is that I don't think people are utilizing mentors as, as much as they should, uh, or at least uh, as much as they, 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 uh, they used to. Uh, A so lot of times when people hear the word mentor, they hear coach or expensive. Yeah. And so they and and someone that's got to be like top of the of the thing, and they don't have the connection or the network to reach those people, and so they just don't do it. Um, they got to be better than you, and they have to have an invest in interest in you growing uh, personally. It, it, otherwise, you're a manager, right? right. A big difference exactly. in, in between that and a mentor. Yeah. Uh, a manager just wants to put up numbers. A mentor is uh, investing in the growth and development of an individual. I would absolutely agree. And I, I agree with you. I don't think enough people uh, utilize that. Um, even within our office, other sales reps. I mean, there's another rep that's been here with me just as long as I have 
we constantly trade ideas about this is work this because you've got to be in a you know you've got to change with the times mm -hmm. you know what Always. i did 20 years ago i mean let's be candid i mean walking into a business when nobody knows who you are is not as well receptive today as what it was 20 years ago <laughs> you know um so you've got to be a little bit more creative about how people can hide behind email they can hide behind linkedin social media platforms um what are you going to do to be different stand out with everybody else that's trying to get through to you to email um phone. You got to be different. Person. You got to be unique because uh, otherwise, you know, why is somebody going to choose you uh, over your competitor? Um, Angela, you, you touched on something that I, I would love to get your perspective on. Um, just a, a second ago, you mentioned that you're the only female in your office. Okay. And I've noticed in, in, in my world of uh, working with businesses and working in sales that th that's probably a common ratio. You guys probably aren't unique in that. Why do you think that is? Well, I think it comes down to one. Um, I don't want to say, um, I think women as a whole are more nurturing but, uh, just by nature. But definitely stubborn. Um, so and I, stubborn. Think, I think <laughs> so that's universal. I, I think, <laughs> um, I think it has to do with a lot of times that we look for security and a lot of times in a sales uh, role, when you start out many sales positions, the ones that are the most lucrative are um, commission only type jobs and women looking for security that turns them away from them or uh, the stress that comes with that might be some of the stuff that deters uh, them for that. But once again, l looking back and knowing now what you, you know, uh, uh, what you know now compared to what you didn't know then, um, but would you have done anything differently? Um, no, I mean, I happened to fall into copier sales kind of unexpectedly. It, it would, for me, I would have just had a little bit more confidence in myself in the beginning. You know, like I said, those days that I did, you know, think I've had enough and I, you know, jokingly said going home crying and stuff at the end of the day, you know, um, I think I would have just believed in myself and just, you know, had a lot more confidence in myself that things are going to be okay. That's right. Uh, and, and I hope every viewer gets that, you know, that really hits home when they are getting ready for the to, to head out for that new day of uh, prospecting and, and rejection and some no's that uh, you're going to get to that. Yes. And so keep that keep that confidence uh, all the way through. Um, so, you know, we we've talked about some uh, overall kind of themes in sales such as confidence and um tenacity and um but uh, are there any tricks of the trade any um uh, of those fundamentals that you can share with the audience share with that everybody viewing that um it doesn't really our live studio audience are uh, yes <laughs> um <laughs> I would think the biggest thing I will tell you that I see over the years with other reps, even with myself, um, we are normally salespeople are talkers by nature, but there is an, an uh, one thing that is so important to your success is your listening skills and do not be afraid just to simply ask for the business. You know, uh, is there something I can do to get you to move forward today is very powerful. And I think a lot of times we as reps, we get into our own heads sometime and we just don't simply ask that question. Yeah. D don't, don't, uh, don't lie to yourself. You know, it, it, it is. And you know, and you just said that you hit on the other thing. Um, don't lie to yourself. I think it's a very, you know, we get reps get into a, our salespeople get into a habit of feeling like they're busy, but actually questioning yourself and being honest with yourself is what I'm doing truly bringing me to my end all goal of making a sale. Yeah, I, and I've had it uh, explained to me a couple different ways, but the, the way that I really re remembered it is classifying your activities in between uh, red, yellow, and green, right? Green is uh, the actual activities that lead to money lead to production. Uh, the yellow, it might be, uh, you know, um, it's needed. It is needed, but it, it isn't, it doesn't result in that. And that may be like administrative works, emails, you know, stuff like that. Um, and 
don't lie to yourself when you're doing the, that red uh, activity that is really wasting time when it comes to your business. It might be needed personally, but you need to classify it when you're here at work. Um, you know, you, you do not need to uh, make that phone call to set that doctor's appointment or uh, uh, answer the phone for your mom. Sorry, mom. It's just real. <laughs> um, uh, you don't need to answer the phone call for your, you know, y- your mom so she could tell you, you know, what, uh, what's going on with, with the, with the family. Um, stay focused and don't lie to yourself. Stay in, in that green time, especially during the day. For me, no one wants to talk about financial planning and insurance at 10, 11 o'clock at night. Right. So that's, yeah. I, I, I move that yellow time into that time. I do a lot of my admin stuff after the kids go to bed because this is prime time during the day that I can actually uh, prospect and uh, talk to people um, and, uh, uh, you know, save the, save the red time for whenever you can't do the other two. Um, but that you got to stay productive. Uh, uh, otherwise you're, you're, you're lying to yourself. Absolutely. Um, is there anything that, um, you have, uh, uh, used as a resource? I know you mentioned mentors, but, um, any, uh, books that you've read that's really helped you along, um, maybe a motivational speakers, maybe, um, uh, you know, maybe industry specific. I listen to a lot of audiobooks because yeah. I do spend a lot of time in my car and stuff like that. And I, I can't say that there's one necessarily that stood out. I think you've always got to be making an investment in your career. Um, so I, I do listen to a lot of sales related training and stuff like that in just my day to day because it's something too that keeps you focused um, on what you're doing, especially during your prime selling time. Are you doing e- um, emails right now? I, I do emails. No, no, no. I'm saying right now. I, I would just be imp- I just heard the noise. And <laughs> if, you, if you're able to multitask like that, that is amazing. I couldn't do that. No, they keep going off. I didn't uh, yeah. couldn't figure out how to. I, I'm really good at technology in yeah. some ways. I could not figure out how to silence those. They keep going don't, off. Don't get I mean, me started. Uh, actually, this, I, this guy's good at technology. I, um, I know how to do what I need to do to do my job. Uh, otherwise, turn it off, turn it back on again. And then yeah, I call like, him. I keep my, my notifications go off all the time. Yeah. So I put my phone on silent, but I couldn't figure out how to silence the one on my computer. Yeah. So I apologize about uh, that. No, 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 not a problem in the world. I mean, this is, this is prime uh, <laughs> money making green time. And you've taken some of that to, to, to give it to me. I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, you always got to constantly um, sh- sharpen the saw. What, what book well, is a, that I from? I have a question. Sharpen the saw. Sharpen the saw. That was one of the uh, uh, um, uh, habits of highly effective people. Um, but yeah, you always got to get better. And, and part of that is, is watching this, uh, show part of that is those audio books. Um, and, um, but yeah, you know, there's one that thing I will point. share with you. I actually have one of my friend's son and, and this is funny cause you know, um, I'm here on this show talking to you about someone that's the tenured sales rep, but one of my, uh, best friends, her son is in sales and, um, he's, doing a great job. Well, he started a book club and he started a book club that where he was challenging people in his book club to read books. And it's normally on professionalism, sales, this, um, and those type of things. And I thought it was so great because I was one, I was very proud of him because he's doing very well in his career and growing. But I have to say that he actually taught me something just from being enjoying in his club. And I made a commitment to him that, Hey, if you're going to do this, I'm going to read your book. And he did a, the Dale uh, Carnegie one most recently, recently was the one on how to win and influence people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was very, very interesting for me. Cause I'll have to say as a tenured sales rep, I had never read that. And Dale Carnegie has been around forever, it's a classic, but talking yeah. about how you um, build your network of people. And so I would challenge, you know, if you're you know, just thinking about that, that was a book I thought that was very powerful and impactful uh, just off building relationships. Yeah. D- um, yeah, like my it. my boss actually when I started in copier sales, they sent me to the Dale the Dale Carnegie course. I had to go through there for a week before they would even let me. <laughs> and, but, but before you lose it, what was the question? Oh yes, um, talking about uh, uh, copiers. I know is a very competitive environment, right? And so most of the times when you submit a proposal to a business, you're not the only one. Um, right. How do you? Uh, win contracts. What's your strategy for that? Uh, a lot of people are like, just drop the price. Uh, my boss was very anti price dropping. Um, we sold value. Um, and, and so I just wanted to hear your, your input on that and how you deal with com- competitive bidding situations. 
Well, and I'll tell you, I think that your your boss was very smart in that regards because what happens is when you get in a price con uh, situation like that and everything's based totally off price, you also know that after the fact, you're probably going to have someone that um and it, that might be a little bit more high maintenance on the outside, on the support side of it and stuff like that. So I think it's very imperative that you build value of what you have to offer. You take a true solutions approach. Uh, that's how you get out of being um, in a cash, you know, it's all like about trans price. transactional type of, of sale instead of building relationships. Yes. Yeah. You want to, the relationship side of it is so, is so important because if you go in there with the solution and the value, and even I tell, I bring value just because I personally come in there and train um, the things that I add, don't be afraid to put a value on what you're going to bring to the table. But if you're going to monetize it that way, you better be able to deliver it. So um, I think that that's very important is just you come in, you've got you've got to look at it as a solution. You can't make it transactional. That's well, a really important reminder for newbies is not to over promise and under deliver. Yeah. <laughs> do well, not and, do that. And as we're kind of wrapping up today and let me just say, Angela, you have delivered, I, I you know, a lot of great stuff that we've talked about today. Um, is there anything that, that you think that we've missed um, or, or, you you know, uh, or if there's anything that you would like to promote, um, I, I would encourage it. Um, no, I, I actually appreciate the opportunity because every time I have a chance to um, do something like this, it does remind me of how far I've come in my journey. Um, you, you start looking at stuff that, hey, how did I get successful? And it reminds you of those basics. Um, I do encourage, I think one thing that we see more and more of a push on and for me personally, in my industry, um, a lot of new people, we get bogged down in all the technology side of it and stuff. And I do encourage sometimes just to reach out. LinkedIn's a great tool. It really is. It's a good way to connect with people. But I think people more today are valuing more and more that true personal connection as we get more technology driven. So I would encourage you to take time out of your day to uh, take clients to lunch, um, enjoy a happy hour with them, take them to breakfast, truly connect, because that is an avenue of business that uh, in so many ways is kind of uh, it's old school and it's kind of outdated. But I think it's so important mm -hmm. that you truly have those personal connections that is uh, excellent yeah excellent that, that is excellent and um uh, again thanks for coming um and uh, next time i'm back home seeing the fam and uh, these episodes always just fly by so quickly it, it, it really does uh but um yeah uh, thanks again angela and uh, uh, look forward to speaking to you in the future appreciate you coming Thank awesome you good job i appreciate it Bye. take care all right, everybody. Angela Merritt, Dex Imaging. That was 19 years of experience coming at you and letting you know that no matter where you're at in your career, get back to those fundamentals, that they made you successful in the first place for a reason and the, nothing changed. You, uh, you still need to, to, to do the activity. Uh, you still need to do the follow-ups. Um, so and if, don't if think you're too good. And if that stuff is uncomfortable for you, doing those things, that, that type of activity is uncomfortable, you're new you're, and you're starting your business and you're not sure exactly how to get started, you heard what she said. Go get a job with the copier business industry. Yeah. I'm telling you, work six months to a year. Yeah. The education and the what you're going to go through in that year yeah. is going to carry on for the rest of your life, and it's going to teach you so many avenues and of marketing. Th that and perspective, um, you know, that perspective. If you don't already have the tenacity, uh, that 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 industry will definitely show you how to stay in the game and um, just to have the the confidence to to refuse to give up just to know that it will you will get to where you want to be um, if you just stay uncomfortable long enough and keep growing and you haven't lived until you've been escorted out of a building by security you know yeah <laughs> and that will happen well I, I, I don't think I've done that professionally I think on my own time <laughs> I've been escorted a lot of places that uh, well there was a lot of no soliciting buildings in California and when you know but we would go in there anyway some people wanted to talk to you everybody in there needed a copier right so, yeah um, but you would go in and try and eventually someone would say hey you're not allowed and then to Mr. 
tenacity, we'd be throwing little pebbles uh, uh, up at your <laughs> prospect's window. No. I got a copy well, of it. you know what I did? I, no, I just came back bearing gifts. I came back bearing gifts. I had a gift for everybody. Um, and then the lady that, that was responsible for getting me escorted out, she was the one that handheld me and walked me around to every office to make sure each one of the offices got the gift. Uh, you'll never have the same day twice, everybody. Get in yeah. sales, <laughs> kick butt, and you're going to make it happen and keep the tenacity going. See y'all next time. Thank y'all. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this episode of the Commission Mission. I hope you got a lot out of it. We need you guys to like, follow, subscribe, whatever that action is for the platform that you're watching it on and please leave a review. That's a great way of giving us a compliment. And if you're listening to this show and you're interested in working with a great team in either the financial industry or real estate, uh, Mike and I have opportunities available for people to join our team. You can uh, find us at livingthatcommissionlife.com and go to the Join Us tab. Highland Finance, helping you prepare for life. The profit your business brings in should go to you, not accidents, injuries, and hurricanes. Do a policy review on your general liability and workers' comp today. Our proven track record helps our clients prepare for life. Call 850-359-5989. Highland Finance.